Okay, so this right here is my little sister's Ford Explorer Sport Track. Originally, I was gonna make everything one video where I swap out the hub, upper lower control arm bushings and ball joint, outer tie rod end and all that. But seeing as how long it would be and how most people are only gonna be replacing one at a time, I've decided to split it up into multiple different videos. So this video is how I'm gonna be doing the uh, hub which is you know a thing that fails actually this hub doesn't seem to be that bad it is quite a bit rusty but and mixed it. but it, it still turns freely the hub on the other side was failing quite badly so i have the part and i thought why not do it all at one time that way this truck doesn't need to be back off the road again so step one to take this off which is the wheel spacer most cars don't have this my dad decided to fit larger tires on this truck and a leveling slash lift kit on it so it is a bit taller and at which point the spacers became necessary i'm going to tear this back on because that got hot really fast Okay, so now that that's off, the next step is to take off this brake caliper right here. Okay, so I've now turned the wheel. Those are brake caliper bolts off. Right back, trying to get something to tie that with. Now for the brake order. Rotor's off. Now this right here is a wheel speed uh, sensor cable. The new hub assembly actually comes with a new one of these. So what you want to do is pop the hood and start disconnecting it from up top. If you actually follow the wire, you can see it clips on in here. All right, there's one clip. Oh, okay, so here I am after. Oh my god, hello, Pepper. Mm, mm. Here I am after the fact. Uh, everything's been put back together, but when I checked the video, there are a couple things that need more attention placed on them. Uh, one, well, it's basically this ABS cable. It hooks up right here. Plenty of space to get into it. It's going to be clipped in here, right onto the AC line right there. That goes right down and also clips in right on top of the strut right here onto these two upper bolts, just like so. Then it runs here, it's clipped in here, down, clips on right here, and another one gets bolted on right back there behind the hub. That one too, missed that one. Wow, okay. So that's out. It's relatively similar for the other side. One, once you do this side, you pretty much know exactly how to do the other side and vice versa. So now, time to pull that all the way down here and pull it up from the top. Here's the plug we just removed. Now this is a an 8mm socket. Take that off there. Now the next step is to take off the uh, actual three bolts holding this together. be 15 millimeters relatively small size yep there we go so that's bolt number three off now more than likely this is not going to pop off easy so you're going to use need to use what's called a slide hammer luckily i have one since i already did the other side and i realized just how hard it's going to be so this part goes on here Oh, actually, one thing I should mention. If this was a four-wheel drive truck, you have a center castle nut or a hub nut right there that you would have to pull off. Because this is just a two-wheel drive one, we don't need to worry about that. So this gets bolted back on like so. And that goes there. That should be all the way on. See, nice and easy. So this right here is a Ford original part. 
even though the original Ford part kind of went bad within like 30,000 miles. Now you want to place it right here with the wheel bearing or with the wheel speed sensor facing right back this way. Just like how when you picked it off. Stick a bolt in there just to make sure everything lines up right. Now these do need to be Loctited down. So I gotta go find my Loctite. Now I'm gonna route the wires real quick and then I'm gonna torque it down to spec. This one goes in here. This bolts right to here. I'm gonna keep this one loose for now because I do need to take these strut bolts off later. But this one clip right onto the top of the strut and it's gonna connect on the inside. Now, okay, so the torque specs on these bolts are going to be 90 foot-pounds, which is actually a lot lighter torque than I was expecting. This Harbor Freight torque wrench was 20 bucks. I definitely recommend it to anyone who's going to need a torque wrench. They're amazing. Okay, that's the wheel bearing. Next step is to put the brake on and then the brake disc. So, I, like I said earlier, I am going to be replacing all this stuff, yeah, like these torn up bushings over here and everything else. That is going to be the next video, but the next clips are going to be of me putting everything back together. I'll post the video of me replacing these bushings, ball joints, but it's all going to be done at one time, which is going to explain the continuity error. Okay, so the video that, uh, that you saw was shot on a GoPro Hero 5 Plus Silver. Now, the video of me putting everything back together was shot in the Hero 7 because stuff happened and I ended up needing a new GoPro. Now let me tell you something, there is a learning curve between the 5 Plus, which I feel is a better camera, and the Silver, and as such, certain bits of footage are gone. That's going to be a recurring theme for like the next 5 to 10 videos, because I started filming a lot of videos pretty early and then I kind of had like a a long time spread between the two of them and said got new camera and new camera I didn't read the instructions and yada yada point being just put everything back together the way you took it off it's relatively simple main thing to remember is that the way I took off the brakes I took it off just from the caliper bracket to the knuckle assembly I didn't take off the brake slider bolts the brake caliper bracket bolts are going to be 122 foot pounds the brake slider bolts are going to be 53 foot pounds so those are the ones that hold the actual caliper into the bracket now the bracket to the knuckle that's going to be the 122 uh tighten all the lugs down to 100 foot pounds now because you know we have a wheel spacer tighten the wheel spacer to 100 foot pounds then tighten the wheel to 100 foot pounds and if you do have the 4x4 version which we did not you gotta tighten that center 32 millimeter nut down to a hundred and eighty eight foot pounds. Hundred and eighty eight. Hundred and eighty eight, hundred and eighty four, somewhere in that range. Also one more thing. Don't forget to put anti C's in between the knuckle and the hub. I didn't do it in the video, but like I did it. And it's especially important if you don't live in a desert and maybe you live in the Rust Belt, in which case it will be a lot harder to get it off. This time it only took three slaps to take it off, you know, because anti seize was on there. It's going to take three slaps again to take it off, hopefully. If you don't, it's going to take 500 mighty blows. Uh, but that's about it. If you like this video, hit like. If you want to see more, hit subscribe. And man, I look really ugly on this camera. On the bright side, the video quality on the Pixel 3 Plus is great. It makes my face look exactly like the surface of the moon. Wow. 24 years old and I still have acne. That is depressing.